My main focus for this unit was to improve the look of clothing from static to more dynamic without the use of sometimes expensive simulation. Some character artist job offers are now listing Marvel as designer as a requirement. This software, initially used in the fashion industry, is capable of realistic class simulation and creation. It offers 3D view for real-time adjustments and 2D view for drafting. This becomes very useful when artists such as Marina Ciodini from DICE use realistic draft examples to replicate pieces of garments. An image of a draft can be loaded as a background and simply outlined in a matter of seconds. Users can import custom meshes to use as a collision which allows the same clothing to be used on multiple silhouettes and thus reflect authentic differences in clothes deformation. Another realistic features are sewing, creation of buttons at their corresponding holes, zippers, ironing, pinning and much more. Thanks to the software's real-time simulation, artists can adjust the clothing on the fly while still colliding with the character and maintaining the same topology. The last aspect becomes extra beneficial for using Morph, as I'll demonstrate later. In addition to the selection of free-like tools and production, Marvelous also offers a wide variety of fabric types with their corresponding attributes to further enhance the genuine output of the simulation. When it comes to rendering options, the garments can be previewed in a standard lid mode, a wireframe mode and a pressure display mode, which can help the artist understand if any kind of stretching is even possible in certain areas. If the user is concerned with the topology, there is an option to toggle between a triangulated or a quadded mesh, however, there are certain flaws. Firstly, the triangulation of the quads in most cases is not ideal and needs to be manually flipped. Secondly, even if it's set to quads, the mesh will still contain triangles. And lastly, even though the patterns are identical in the draft view, the topology is not symmetrical. All of this can be overlooked if it's to be retopologized and used as a high poly for baking. If that is the case, Marvelous Designer can increase the density of the mesh so that the simulation is more physically accurate and detailed, at the cost of performance though. Ever since the software has been adapted as a game industry tool, it supports exporting in game formats such as OBJ or FBX with the inclusion of animation. For a refined simulation, the user can turn off linear simulation, which computes the finest detail but disables any kind of interaction with the outfit, which is ideal for a high poly mesh. Thanks to the drafting setup, the exported mesh also includes an ideal UV for clothing in a game, because if a detail map is to be applied, it would realistically represent the fabric's texture distortion. As I mentioned before, once the draft is created, its corresponding meshes topology remains the same until the draft is edited. This allows me to drag up the sleeves without changing the topology. For this kind of process, the artist can use the solidify option to fix the clothing in a desired position and adjust it manually by dragging. That way I have two meshes with different silhouette but identical topology. Marvelous Designer relies on CPU for its computation of complicated simulations and can therefore take advantage of multi-threaded CPUs, just like, for example, ZBrush does. Comparing that to 3ds Max, which fails to utilize multiple cores, it is in many cases the preferred choice for cloth production in the game industry. My main topic for this video is dynamic cloth. EA's FIFA 18 demonstrates cloth deformation in its in-game engine cutscenes and my goal is to replicate this result. At first I looked at another game example of clothing from a AAA company. I've discovered that Battlefront's textures for outfits contain no fabric information for a normal or albedo. Instead they define the fabric type by a DT normal map which allows them to be more flexible.
but in-game cloth still looks static. I've learned that in order to use Morph Modifier, the topology must be identical, otherwise it won't work. At the moment I have two versions of a shirt, one with rolled up sleeves and the second with normal ones, both created in Marvelous Designer. Then I can easily transition between those two states. When exporting as FBX, it's vital to include morphs in the exporter. The first idea was to create multiple meshes with the same topology and bake a specific normal. That way I will morph a mesh and a normal map. However, I've realized that by doing so I'm restricted by the mesh's normals and that I'm stuck with just one normal map per mesh. When importing the Unreal Engine 4, it's essential to check all the necessary tick boxes, such as to include the morph targets. Additionally, I've learned that if using the original UE4 mannequin as the target skeleton, it's required to convert the scene units, otherwise the physics assets used for collision with world and clothing will be incorrectly scaled. In Engine, I control the strength of morph targets inside an animation with a simple curve. That way I can enable or disable certain morph states for specific animations. Here is a running animation. With two curves I am blending between a state where the cloth is stretched towards his left shoulder and second for his right one. However, even with smooth curves the blending was too harsh so I have decided to go back to the drawing board and approach it in a different way without having to redo my curves. Before I was trying to define the wrinkles with both the mesh and the normal map. Plus I couldn't morph the rolled up sleeve state. So instead I decided to morph only the normal maps and morph the mesh when changing the silhouette is actually necessary. Because I'm not altering the mesh and its normals just for a wrinkle change, I can now have multiple amount of big normals which were required for a smoother transition anyway. As for the sleeves, I created the morphed state so that only the geometry of the sleeves change, but the body remains neutral. I pick a specific normal map for the sleeves to add more detail and smoothness and then masked it so that only the area with the sleeve is affected and wrinkles on the body remain untouched. Not only is this method more flexible since I'm not restricted by the morph mesh normals, but my theory was that this is also more efficient on the performance. However, first I needed to see whether the second method was giving me better results. As you can see, I haven't modified the curves in the animation, but the transition is already now smoother and there is no crossing of the wrinkles. In the end, I have two normal maps for each state, one subtle and second stronger. In the material, I'm then transitioning between these two maps, which then blend with the rest. To prove my theory about better performance, I put 224 instances of the actor playing the running animation. These are using the first method, where I'm morphing both meshes and normal maps. The frame rate stagnates around 36 frames per second. The second test again demonstrates 224 subjects looping the running animation, but this time I'm using the second method of blending only the normal maps. As you can see, the game is running around 40 frames per second, therefore proving my theory correct. Suggestion for further research would be answering the question, why is it more efficient? Combining this method and the way DICE created the clothing in Battlefront 2015, I can compare my result with FIFA's and state I have achieved a similar result, although mine clearly isn't as refined as theirs. In order to demonstrate skill in retopology of assets created via photogrammetry, I decided to use HeadScan downloaded from 3dscan.com. This scan was captured in a special design capture lab. This high poly scan consists of over 1 million triangles and comes with textures of 10,000 by 10,000 pixels resolution. This amount of data would be overwhelming and is probably unnecessary for a game engine and therefore needs to be optimized by retopologizing and baking maps. Using Topogun 2, I reconstructed the geometry with a fraction of the original triangle count. Reducing the triangle density to around 2000 led to a loss of precision of the model's silhouette in certain places, but that is a common issue with game ready models in the industry. Thanks to Marmoset Toolback 3, 
I can easily switch between all of my baked maps and make sure all my bakes are correct and aren't showing an artifact. Sometimes surrendering the full material in certain lighting setups may not display all potential problems. Reducing the geometry to a reasonable amount is vital for game's performance. Using wireframe you can see the original mesh was so dense the actual material is nearly impossible to see. The game ready mesh was retopologized using guidelines for an ideal facial topology by Tom Parker. Here I am demonstrating that the bake texture created at 4K resolution is more than four times smaller than the original. It's power of two and once again more efficient for a game engine. The slight changes in this silhouette become obvious only under close inspection. One of the leading studios in the industry using photogrammetry, Activision and DICE, have shown the quality of their scans using their own design capture apps with numerous cameras, special lighting setup and series of emotions which are then blended together using probably morph. During their talk at ZBrush Summit 2017, they mentioned the software being used, however the question of texture resolution and mesh topology remains unanswered. In many cases, a scan is not available or not ideal, so the high poly model needs to be made manually. This piece of horse armor was sculpted in ZBrush using various techniques. Sitting at nearly million and a half triangles needs to be retopologized. Using this sculpted mesh, I can bake a normal map, AO, curvature, and a vertex color map, which helps me quickly separate material types and use it as an ID map in a texturing software. I once again experimented with Topogon 2 to create my game ready mesh, however the UE was made in 3ds Max. The geometry was brought down to 928 triangles, but as I'll demonstrate in a minute, could be decreased even more. The final step is to make a full material. The asset was textured in Quixel using specular PBR workflow. I'm using Malmaster Toolbook 3 as my previous software because it's a rendering software capable of both specular and metalness workflow, the two mainstream rendering techniques in the current games industry. The rest of the horse armor was then put into Total War Attila, a game by Creative Assembly, where I could use player's perspective to judge the overall output and compare it to one of the original horse armors. I decided to challenge myself and reduce the polycan without altering the silhouette. One of the original assets created by Creative Assembly has just above 2000 triangles, but compared to my model has simpler silhouette. Now looking at my topology in wireframe helped me realize where my triangle density didn't actually support the outline of the mesh. So after a quick edit I reduced the triangle count from 5500 to 3231, but since the mesh was altered the normal map needed to be rebaked. Comparing the silhouettes it can be said that the differences are subtle if not almost not existing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.